All right, hi guys, it's Justin here. Um, today we'll be answering questions 48 to 50 in the Acer Red paper. Um, all right, so question 48, let's just start with that. Um, as the hy uh, hydrochloric acid that is formed when chlorine reacts with water is completely ionized, its pKa value must be negative A. Um, its concentration must be very low B. Um, the pool water must have been basic initially C, or D, it must be weak, a weaker acid than hypochlorous acid. So let's start with A, um, that the uh, pKa value of hydrochloric acid must be negative. Alright, so first off let's try and, um, we, we've got to actually know what the pKa value is. Um, pKa is equal to negative log 10 of Ka. Now what is Ka? Um, first off it's important to understand that the um, dissociation of uh, acids is described by the following equation. Um, so HA becomes H plus um, plus A minus. All right, um, so the, basically a, um, uh, prior to being introduced to water, the acid is uh, together and then afterwards it's completely dissociated into its individual ions. So Ka is equal to the concentration of H plus times the concentration of A minus on HA. So effectively it's saying the concentration of products um, over the concentration of its uh, initial reactants. Um, so how, how, how can we figure out the Ka from this information? Um, we know that hydrochloric acid is completely ionized. So what that means is that the Ka value um, is going to be uh, much higher because uh, it's going to be a, a large number basically because the products um, divided by reactants is going to be heavily in weighted in favor of the products so it's going to be overall Ka is going to be quite a large number. So if Ka is a large number therefore we know that log 10 of Ka is going to be uh, greater than 0 and after that therefore we know that log negative log 10 of Ka, sorry, Ka, um, is going to be less than zero. It's going to be a negative number. So therefore, we know that pKa is going to be less than zero, and thus pKa is negative. Uh, negative. Cool. So therefore, uh, from that, we can conclude that A is true. Um, B, C, and D um, well, they actually can all be uh, proved to be false by knowing one simple fact, and that's that um, strong acids completely dissociate, um, and that's just a fact for all strong acids. Um, and three good, three strong acids to know off the top of your head that are good to know for the GAMSAT um, is hydrochloric acid, um, uh, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and... Um, nitric acid, HNO3. So strong acids will always completely dissociate and that's just um, an important fact to know. So if you know that, um, then uh, we can prove that B is uh, not true. So as the hydrochloric acid is formed when chlorine reacts with water is effectively completely ionized, its concentration must be very low. We, we know that's not true because um, strong acids always uh, dissociate completely or ionize completely. Uh, regardless of its initial concentration. Um, similarly, the pool water must have been basic initially. Um, for C, well, we know that hydrochloric acid will always uh, completely ionize because it's a strong acid um, and the initial basicity of the water isn't going to affect that. Um, and D, it must be a weaker acid than hypochloric hypochlorous acid, well we know that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. So B, C and D can all be proved wrong by the one simple fact that HCl is a strong acid. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Alright, so that's question 48 completed. Alright, question 49. Um, so the question 49 is asking us to find the concentration of hypochlorite iron in the swimming pool. Um, so first things first, we've got to figure out what formula we've got to use. Um, in this case, we use C is equal to N on V, where N is equal to the number of moles um, of the compound in question, and V is the volume of water. 
um, that that compound is uh, located in. So in this case, um, the volume is equal to 20,010 litres um, because we also, we've got 20,000 litres uh, in the swimming pool and the 10 litres in the bucket, but we can round this down to 20,000 litres. Um, and then we've also got the, an initial concentration of um, 0.5 moles of calcium hypochlorite. Right, so first things first, um, the concentration of calcium hypochlorite um, is going to be equal to 0 0.5 on 20,000. Right, and uh, in general, to divide numbers like this with lots of zeros, um, I generally like to uh, convert everything into scientific notation. Um, so we've got 5 times 10 to the negative 1 on 2 times 10 to the 4. So this gets us 2.5, 5 on 2, um, times 10 to the negative 5. Right, so that's the concentration of calcium hypochlorite, but we know that the question is asking us for the hypochlorite ions specifically. Um, so in this case, therefore, we'd be able to say that the concentration of hypochlorite ions is going to be um, equal to uh, 2.5 times 10 to the negative 5 times 2 because every single um, molecule of calcium hypochlorite has two, mole, two molecules of um, hypochlorite in it. So that leaves us with 5 times 10 to the negative 5 um, moles and therefore the concentration of hypochlorite is 5 times 10 to the negative 5 and the answer is B. Alright, question 50 read. Of the following, the greatest amount of hypochlorite ions per kilogram of chlorinating agent would be produced by um, A. Sodium chloride, hypochlorite, B. Calcium hypochlorite, C. Uh, nitrogen trichloride, or D. Chlorine oxide. Um, so, we're trying to find the number of hypochlorite ions per kilogram. Um, in this case, we'd want to use the following formula, N is equal to mass um, on molecular weight. Note that mass is in grams. It's one of the few um, formulas that uses mass in grams. All right, so first off, um, using this formula, we can find the number of moles of chlorinating agent. Um, so in this case, we have sodium hypochlorite, and that results in um, a mass of 1,000 because we are given a kilogram. So 1,000 uh, 1, grams on the molecular weight, which in this case is 14 plus 16 plus 35.5. Um, and that is equal to 1,000 on 30 plus 35.5, which is about equal to 1,000 on 65. All right. Um, so then you fill that up for the rest of the uh, chlorinating agents, like so. You'll notice that I've left the answers all in a fraction form. The reason I've done that is because it takes quite a lot of time to actually fully um, divide this out into like a decimal or whole number form. Um, and that in the GAM set, if you have to do it for four individual chlorinating agents, you're just not going to have enough time. So I've left it as fractions, and we can kind of... Um, manipulate them and hopefully get the answer afterwards. So um, what we've found so far is the number of mole of each individual chlorinating agent, but we've been asked to find again the number of mole of hypochlorite ions. So um, in this case, uh, sodium hypochlorite produces one hypochlorite ion per molecule, so that therefore we can say that the number of Hypochlorite ion is just going to be equal to 1 on 60, 1,000 on 65 for sodium hypochlorite. Um, calcium hypochlorite ion, uh, calcium hypochlorite, on the other hand, produces two um, hypochlorite ions per molecule. So we get 1,000 on 140 times two, which is equal to 1,000 on 70. Um, nitrogen trichloride uh, produces three. Um, hypochlorite ions, so we get essentially 1,000 on 20 times 3, which is equal to 1,000 on 40. Um, chlorine oxide produces uh, two, two uh, hypochlorite ions per molecule, so we get 1,085 times 2, which is equal to 1,000 on 
42-ish, about 42. So um, looking at all these answers, um, we can say that uh, nitrogen trichloride will produce the most amount of uh, hypochlorite ions because 1040 is going to result in the largest number. So therefore, um, the answer C is correct.